Welcome to Larry's Library and welcome to another Top 10 Tuesday. This time we are looking at my picks for a Marvel Evergreen list. So this is my definitive Marvel Omnibus Evergreen list in Top 10 format. So what is an Evergreen list? Well these are books that, that I think should be in print forever and that Marvel should never let them run out. They should just continually keep them in print uh, so they're always available. That's, that's an evergreen. In many ways, this video is kind of a response to the, uh, the video that Omar did over on Near Mint Condition. He had a, a little panel there and they all gave their picks and it was kind of a back and forth of Marvel omnibuses uh, that they thought should be evergreen. And they had to vote on it and it was sort of a, it's kind of a bracket type of deal. I understand the premise there was just for fun. So let me go over exactly what my criteria are and why I think these books I'm about to talk about should be evergreen. Now, when I think of evergreen, and, and again, I know the point of that video was a lot different than the point of this video because I'm approaching it not just for fun. I mean, I hope it's fun. I hope it's enjoyable to watch this and to think about these things. And when I'm considering what should be evergreen insofar as Marvel omnibuses, I, the criteria I'm using is I, I think it should be something that is a seminal work that's of real importance to the Marvel Universe. And when I say the Marvel Universe, I mean uh, the comic books, publishing going forward, uh, pop culture, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe as well. What influence has it had on that? And what influence will it possibly have going into the future? Now, that's not the most important thing, not at all. I think the comic books are more important than the films, for sure, or the TV shows or any of that. Uh, that. So I, I'm looking at it as the importance to the entire publishing line, uh, firstly, the importance as a historical thing. You know, what I, I'm trying to look beyond my own personal opinions on you know what I think is coolest or what I enjoy reading the most that that is I'm trying not to let that even enter in so this isn't my top 10 favorite Marvel omnibus not at all this is what I believe should be evergreen so I've taken a long time to think about this and I think I've assembled a list and I think I've put it in order of importance from 10 to 1 or at least I tried to that part's a lot more difficult than just picking 10 Marvel Omnis you think should be evergreen. Putting them in order, well, that was pretty hard. That took a long time. But I think I nailed it, at least in my opinion. Now, why is my opinion important? Well, it's probably not any more important than your opinion. But I feel like it might be more informed than some people that are new to comic books or haven't read the vast amount that I have read. Not more important, but more informed. And there's a big difference. But, I mean, I've been reading Marvel Comics and collecting them since around 1977. That's a long time. <laughs> and during that time, I've read a lot of collected editions, a lot of reprints, and a lot of single original books. A lot of back issues that cost me a lot of money. So some, some of my views on this were hard won and have taken a long time to form. So... Now, e even as many comics as I have read, I can't read everything. Uh, you know, nobody can read everything. I mean, some come closer than others, for sure. <laughs> I'm not claiming to have the breadth of knowledge that Mark Wade has or Tom Brevoort or some of those guys probably exceed my knowledge base, you know. But I'm going to give you my opinion on this, and I'm going to try to tell you why. Now, one criteria I thought about imposing on myself here is that Really, nothing should be on this list that is not at least 20 years old in publishing time. Now, I thought about that and I thought, well, it's not just an arbitrary figure. I think in most cases you need a couple of decades to go by to see, is this book as important, is this work as important as I first thought it was when I experienced it? Does it have legs? You know, is it influencing things further down the line? Is it affecting the greater Marvel Universe. Uh, is it still an important work? Maybe when I read I thought it was important. Maybe it's not so important now. And I think that was 
my problem with some of the choices made uh, during that video I mentioned earlier is uh, some of these books haven't been around very long, you know, and sure, you might have enjoyed it, you thought it was great, and, and it's great. I'm not taking that away from anyone. But is it that important that you think it should be evergreen? Really? I mean, <laughs> I think we need to give some of these books some time, some of these works, and see if it continues to be important 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road. Now, having said that, my pick for number 10, <laughs> look at my notes here, is actually only about 19 years old. So I violated my first rule right off the bat. But hey, it's my top 10. I could violate the rules if I want to, right? And number 10 is Captain America by Ed Brubaker, Omnibus Volume 1. Now that book started, the original singles that's collected here, that started in 2005. So it just barely ekes under my uh, self-imposed 20-year mark. But it's almost there. If you're watching this video, you know, a year from today, well, it's 20 years old. So this is 2024. But, uh, yeah, I think that that Captain America run by Ed Brubaker is a seminal work for sure. This thing uh, has collected accolades from all over the place, and it continues to. And it has had multiple printings, so maybe this is an evergreen already, you know. It's sure looking that way. But for a long time, it went out. Of, it was out of print, and it was hard to obtain, but the reprints have fixed that, and hopefully it will stay evergreen, because this is quite possibly, in my opinion, uh, the greatest Captain America run that ever has been, and it has certainly uh, influenced many, many issues after that, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe as well, for sure. So that's why it is number 10. Number 9 is Ultimate Spider-Man by Brian Michael Bendis, Omnibus, Volume 1. Now, the, the stuff contained in here came out in 2000, so it is 24 years old at the time of this shooting, and it is still one of the greatest modernizations of a classic Marvel character that has ever happened, and it just continues to influence uh, series after series, books after books, uh, the, the MCU, and it's just a great work. It, it brought uh, Spider-Man into the more modern era. I mean, some people might say, well, it's, it's 20 years old. It's not that modern. I, that's a matter of perspective and age. <laughs> As you get older, 20 years ago doesn't seem very long, I got to tell you. So, Ultimate Spider-Man by Bendis is number nine. Number eight is Daredevil by Frank Miller, Omnibus Volume 1. And Frank Miller took over as far as uh, writing and drawing Daredevil in 1981, according to my notes here. So, this is, how old is that? 40 years old now, something like that. It's getting close to that uh, level. Yeah. And this super influential, super seminal work, this has defined uh, Daredevil. As most of us think of Daredevil, we think of Frank Miller's archetype. We think of what he did with the character. It is still influencing everything from the TV shows to the movies to the comic books. This is the definition of Daredevil is Frank Miller's Daredevil. So that's why it's number eight. Number seven is the Silver Surfer Omnibus. I don't think there's a volume number on it because they've only ever had the one. I mean, they've had a couple Silver Surfer book uh, Omnis, but only the one collecting the original material, the original series that began in 1968. Now, many people consider this the uh, Stan Lee's best writing of his career, and I'm sort of inclined to, to go with that. It may not be his greatest creation, although that's an argument that, to be had as well, but I think it is the best written Stan Lee that you're going to see. And this series is so important to the cosmic wing of the Marvel Universe. And also, this, this was one of the first books that was taken seriously by... Um, college age and above people. This was very popular on college campuses at that time, gotta say. And it's made its way into pop culture from album covers to songs and on and on and on. The Silver Surfer by Stan Lee is super important and that is why it's number seven in my countdown. Number six is the Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. 
Now, I'm not talking about X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. That's a totally different thing. That's Silver Age. And while it has some significance and some importance, it is not nearly as important as uh, Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. That is the one that defined the group uh, for, for generations. And it's still influential for everything. Again, from the comic books to the MCU to the greater pop culture world, the Uncanny X-Men that's presented in this omnibus this is the one. And for me, really, Volume 2 is the one. As far as my personal uh, X-Men, that's Volume 2 of this Omni series. But this is not that. This list is what I believe should be evergreen. What are the important titles that Marvel should keep publishing and should keep out there? And Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 1, that is definitely no, uh, one of those books, and that's why it's number 6. At number 5, I've got The Incredible Hulk Omnibus Volume 1. Now, the material in here started out in 1962, and I will admit that it is a tough read at times. Uh, it's, you know, when, when I say a tough read, I'm talking about the storytelling, you know, from that far back is a lot different than what we've become accustomed to today, and really even 20 or 30 years ago. This is going back further than that, and it is a little stodgy, a little stilted at times. Uh, the storytelling uh, it uses a lot of small panels, and an overemphasis on um, narration that we don't really need anymore and doesn't happen in later volumes of the Hulk. But it's super important nonetheless, and it has a lot of great artwork in there, and it began to define the character. It, it's not the definitive Hulk, I don't think, but it is the beginning, and to understand, if you want to, if you want to grasp of the comic history, of the Marvel Universe, these books that I'm highlighting here are the bedrock. They're the formation of everything. And that's why I think it's important for someone that wants to really know about comics, Marvel Comics specifically, you need these books in your library and you need to have experienced them. You need to read them. Now, you may not want to keep reading them over and over and over. I don't know. That's up to you. But you need to read it. It's important and that's why it's number five. Number four is the Captain America Omnibus Volume 1. Now, this is the classic Stan Lee and Jack Kirby stuff. Uh, let's see, I've got in my notes here that this is um, 1964 is the earliest stuff in here, and that's the Tales of Suspense before Cap got his own title, which began with issue 100, and that was in, um, let's see, that was in 1968. You know, the Marvel Universe as we know it today came out of the 60s. So, and, and I tell you, when I got this I got this Omni, I was thinking, boy, this is going to be a tough read, because I'm not a huge Silver Age guy, I'm really not. But it surprised me how entertaining and how fun it was. So yeah, it, uh, it's not as hard to read as a lot of Silver Age stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. And it is super important, again, the bedrock of the Marvel Universe, the foundation of all of it, is dependent on these books. At number three, I've got the Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. Now, this one is not hard to read at all. I found it uh, really fun and entertaining, and I found it an easy read. I didn't have a problem with it at all. I think that that is uh, some of Stan Lee's writing here is kind of underrated, I think, and underappreciated by a lot of, uh, a lot of newer people, a lot of younger people. Uh, let's see what I've got in my notes here. This, this was 1962 Amazing Fantasy 15 was the first appearance of, of Spider-Man. And then the next year, 1963, is when Amazing Spider-Man, the OG series, started. And so, yeah, this is um, this is the original Peter Parker. This is the original Spider-Man. You've got a lot of great uh, Steve Ditko art in here. And then eventually you get into the John Romita era, but this is mostly Steve Ditko. And it's great. It's another awesome seminal work that any really hardcore Marvel uh, fan needs to read and it should be part of your library and that's why it's number three in my top 10 marvel evergreen list at number two i've got avengers omnibus volume one now the material in here starts in 1963 originally and this again another seminal work lays down the bedrock for the marvel universe as we know it you're introduced to the characters working together as a team really for the first time 
uh, Thor, Iron Man. They revive Cap from that block of ice, and we are off to the races, and the Marvel Universe as we know it today sort of begins with this, among a couple other books, which we'll get to. That's why this one is number two. So if, that's, if Avengers is number two, well, what does that leave for number one? The most important, most seminal book that needs to be evergreen. Kind of a no-brainer for me, and you probably have guessed it by now, and that is Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's epic 100-issue run begins right there. And this was 1961. So in many ways, 1961 is when the Marvel Universe began, because that's when the Fantastic Four first came out. And this is... This is it. This is the beginning of it all. It's really sad that we have yet to have a really good movie depiction of the FF. I'm hoping this next one might be the one. There's been three or four tries in the past, and they've all had various problems. I'm hoping this is the one, but, you know, if it's not, it doesn't matter, because what's more important than the MCU is the real Marvel Universe in the comic books, and you can experience it right here. And the first few issues are a little rougher read than later issues, but I'm happy to say that having read this, it just gets better and better as it goes along. It really does. And this is it. This is the beginning of everything. This is the shared universe that Stan and Jack built, and it starts with Fantastic Four on the bus volume one. And that is why it's number one on my definitive Marvel Omnibus Evergreen list. I hope you like that. hope you like taking a look at these. These are my opinions, and I know not everyone agrees. Pretty controversial deal. Just watch that Near Mint Condition video if you want to see people argue about it. And it has sparked a lot of conversations all across the Internet, various message boards on Reddit and Discord and everywhere else. People have thrown in their opinions, and people kept asking me, you know, what my evergreen Marvel Omnis would be. And so I finally decided to just go ahead and bring mine out. So that's my opinion. Hope you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.